Hi there, my name is Tom Searle, I'm one of the fifth year medical students and I've been asked to perform an arterial blood gas today. Um, in order to start this station off, I'd come in and I'd wash my hands and I'd first introduce myself to the patient. So I'm Tom Searle, one of the fifth year medical students and I have been asked to perform an arterial blood gas today. What that means is placing a small needle into one of the arteries in the wrist. Uh, it may cause a little discomfort but shouldn't be too painful. If it is too painful, then please let me know and we'll stop. Um, so first of all, I need to make sure that the patient's correctly exposed and positioned, make sure that I have a comfortable access to the wrist, um, and gather my equipment. So for this, I'm going to need the arterial blood gas syringe, which comes preloaded with heparin, um, which is in there to prevent the blood clotting before you take it to the analyzer. I'm also going to need some swabs, I'm going to need a uh, alcohol wipe and also some tape to fasten down the swab afterwards. I can need my sharps bin um, and I also need some gloves. So first of all, I've washed my hands and I'm going to place my gloves on. Once my gloves are on, I'm just going to palpate both the ulna and radial pulse to see which one is more prominent and therefore better to take blood from. It's possible to use either artery, but the radial artery is usually more accessible and more prominent. Um, just to check that the perfusion of the hand is adequate from both arteries, you can perform Allen's test. But for the purpose of this, I'll move on to the procedure. So I'm going to use the radial artery, which means I'm going to um, palpate around the lateral aspects of the wrist. To bring the artery to the surface and make it easier, you can ask the patient to cock their wrist backwards just to bring the artery to the surface. Um, and as you ask them to do that, you can palpate and just make sure that you can visualize the track of the artery. So I can feel the artery there, and I'm just going to plan the site at which I'll place the needle. I can then make sure that I wipe the wrist first, just using one motion down, and I wait for that to dry for 30 seconds um, so that it's sterilized. Whilst that's drying, I can prepare my equipment. So the heparin, uh, heparinized needle comes preloaded with heparin. It also comes with the needle already attached to the syringe. Um, so first of all, you need to take the safety cap off the needle and you need to discard the heparin that's already loaded into the syringe. I'm going to place the needle at 90 degrees into the radial artery and the pressure of the artery pushes blood into the syringe without me having to pull on the plunger. So now that the um, alcohol is dry, I can repalpate and I'm going to aim between my fingers so I can visualize where the artery is going. And I'm going to warn the patient that there's a sharp scratch coming. So just palpating the area. And placing the syringe at 90 degrees. And you can see there that the blood pushes the plunger up. So then I'm going to get my gauze and place it over as I retract the needle. Immediately discard my sharp. And time is of the essence to make sure that the um, blood doesn't degrade in the syringe. So I need to place firm pressure um, with the swab and ask the patient to do so for about five minutes to make sure that it clots the blood. Whilst I do that, then I can make sure that I have the correct patient and the details labelled on the, on the needle, and then take the needle to uh, the syringe and take the syringe to the analyzer to analyze the um, the blood as soon as quickly as possible. So if I assume that I've gone to do that, I can then change my swab 
into a fresh swab and stick it down to make sure it's anchored in place and make sure that my patient is comfortable and happy. Um, I can then discard my, the rest of my equipment and make sure I wash my hands again before moving on. <laughs>